Hi, my name is Ms. Acevedo and I'm here for another read aloud. This one is called Ron's Big Mission and it is one of my favorite books. It's about the life of Ron McNair, an incident or a story that happened to him when he was a child. This is a story written by Rose Blue and Corrine Nadeau. So let's find out what happened and what was Ron's big mission. Here you can see Ron looking at the stars, looking at the moon, and you can see that he's interested in the planets. You're up early this morning. Ron, what's the rush? Asked Mrs. McNair. Come and have your breakfast. I made some oatmeal. I have to go, Mama, said Ron, tying his sneakers. I have something to do this morning. You always have something to do, said his mother with a smile. Just be home by lunchtime, okay? Ron was nine years old. That morning he left his house with a plan. He had been thinking about it for a long time. It was a beautiful South Carolina summer day, and Ron looked up at the blue, blue sky. Someday, he thought, he would be up there flying a plane. He wanted to be a pilot when he grew up, but today Ron had something else on his mind, something very important. Ron walked down the street as fast as he could. He didn't want to be late. Hi, Ron, the grocer called from the front of his store. There you are, just in time for a donut. Ah, morning, Mr. Douglas, said Ron. Thank you, but there's some, some place I've got to be. And Ron kept on walking. Down by the schoolyard, Ron saw his friend Carl shooting hoops. All right, you made it, said Carl. Ah, uh, hi, Carl, said Ron. I wish I could stay, but I've got something important to do. More important than basketball? On a summer vacation, said Carl. Are you kidding? Ron laughed. <laughs> he loved to play basketball, but not today. Today was too important, so Ron kept on walking. When Ron got to the Lake City Public Library, he stopped. This was it. He was hot from walking so fast, and he was nervous too. He took a deep breath, lifted his head high, and went inside. Mrs. Scott was busy getting ready for all the people who would be using the library today. And as the head librarian, she had to make sure that everything was neat and orderly. Mrs. Scott looked up to welcome her first visitor of the day. She smiled as Ron walked in. He was her best customer. Ron gave a little wave to Mrs. Scott and went right into the shelves. So he went to the shelves to look for the books that he wanted. It took Ron a while to find some books because he always looked for books that showed children who looked like him, but that was hard. There were not many books about black kids on the shelves. At last, Ron found some books on airplanes. He took the books and started to walk to the front desk. Ron felt nervous and his hands felt a little sweaty. But he knew what he wanted to do. Mrs. Fielding, a white lady who was often there at the library, stopped him. Y you can give me the books and I'll check them out for you, Ron, she said gently. No thanks, Mrs. Fielding, Ron said. I'm going to do it all by myself, but... But Ron, she started to say, I wonder why she was volunteering or telling him, give me the books and I'll take them out for you. Ron was already on his way to the front desk. He put the books on the counter. I'd like to check these out, please, said Ron. The desk clerk didn't, did not look at him. Didn't she hear me, Ron wondered. Ron knew what he had to do. I wonder why she's not looking at him. He jumped up on the counter. He wanted the desk clerk to know that he was serious. I'd like to check out these books, he said quietly. 
At first, the desk clerk and Mrs. Scott just looked at each other. You know you can't check out books, Ron, said Mrs. Scott. You can read them here. That's the rule. Only white people can check out books from the library. Ron looked at Mrs. Scott and at the desk clerk politely, but he would not budge. I always read them here. Today, I want to check them out said Ron. Mrs. Scott and the desk clerk did not know what to do. Ron wouldn't get off the counter. People were staring. Finally, the desk clerk called the Lake City Police. So there was a rule at this time that allowed white people to have a library card and check out books so that they could take them from the library, read them home, and return them. But that was only for white people. People of color and black people could read at the library, but they were not allowed to take the books home to check them out. And Ron did not think that was fair. So he was standing up for what he believed in. Two policemen came right over. Let someone check out those books for you, son, said one of the policemen. You know the rules. But Ron just shook his head. He would not budge. Now Mrs. Scott called Ron's mother. Mrs. McNair came to the library very quickly. I know how you feel, baby, she said, but you have to follow the rules. I can't, Mama, Ron told her. It's wrong. The rules are not fair. Why can't I check out books like everyone else? No one said anything. Not the desk clerk, not Mrs. Scott, not the policeman. Not even Ron's mother. Mrs. Scott looked at Ron. She thought about all the times that Ron came into the library and all the times that he sat at the tables for hours looking over so many books. He was her best customer and she knew what she had to do. Mrs. Scott walked back into her office and started writing. Ron wondered what she was doing. Mrs. Scott returned and handed Ron a library card, his library card. Ron looked at Mrs. Scott and smiled. As he jumped to the floor, he thought he saw her smile too. I'd like to check out these books, please, he said, handing the card to the desk clerk. The desk clerk took his library card and stamped the cards in the back of the books. These are due back in two weeks, she said. Ron smiled. Thank you, he said. He tucked the books under his arm and took his mother's hand. Together they walked home. Ron couldn't wait to get to his rooms and open to page one. And that is the story of Ron McNair, who became one of the first or the first African-American um, astronaut in America. Um, so we are very proud that even though he was a boy, he understood what was fair and what was not fair, and he decided to fight for fairness. So we invite you to enjoy books such as these ones and recommend more. I love this one. This is my pick. But if you have other picks, please let me know. Enjoy. Bye-bye.